Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. Good to welcome all of you. My name is Joe Monahan, and on behalf of myself and also Associate Pastor Kathleen Stoltz, we want to say we are happy that you're here, and I hope that you'll take a minute and sign. There's a red attendance pad that's on the inside of the pew. I hope that you'll pass it down. It's one of the ways that we get to know one another's names, and if you're willing to share your name and address information with us, if you're visiting today, we'd love to be able to let you know about things that are going on here at the church. There are also some white prayer request cards. If you'd like to lift up a prayer request during uh, worship today, uh, please feel free to fill one of those out. We'll come around and collect those in just a little bit. I hope that you'll take a look at all the announcements that are in the bulletin. Uh, there are a lot, because we have a lot going on, obviously, at this time of the year. Uh, but I want to lift up a few. Uh, the first thing is I want to say thank you to everyone who participated in the uh, food drive for Christian Caring Center. So you see a lot of that food sitting outside. Uh, Christian Caring Center will come by in just a little while and pick all that up. And they want to thank you for that, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, our worship schedule for this week, uh, we've got, obviously, a full week of worship planned here. So we've got Holy Thursday and Good Friday worship here in the sanctuary at 730. Uh, we have a prayer vigil that uh, goes 24 hours. It begins uh, starting at 3 o'clock on Good Friday and continues uh, through our sunrise service. So I hope that you'll take uh, some time, sign up for an hour to be able to pray uh, during that time. And you can come here into the sanctuary. Church will be open. And just take some time to mark uh, this really holy time of year uh, with an hour of prayer. Uh, on Easter Sunday, we have our, our beginning service is going to be at 6.30 in the morning. That's at sunrise service. And then we have uh, breakfast up here in Boker Hall. The first service will have communion, as will the 8 o'clock service. The 8 o'clock will be here in the sanctuary. So 6.30 and 8.30 we'll have communion. Then we'll also have a 9.30 and an 11 service. So I hope that you'll come and uh, join us uh, next Easter Sunday. So a um, couple things. I want to just point out uh, one announcement that's in the bulletin. It's on, actually on the back of the prayer request today. So I hope that you'll take a minute and turn to that and take a look at it. Uh, our church has been dreaming about uh, adding on to this facility for the better part of about 10 years. And we have plans. We also have a significant amount of money in the bank. But at this point, uh, we realize that it's time to reevaluate, make sure that uh, what we talked about doing, what we thought we were going to do, uh, still makes sense to do, and how we want to go forward. Um, and that's why we're planning a series of small group uh, discussion sessions that are going to be happening uh, over the next several weeks. We want to hear from the congregation about where you're at with the project so that that can be input into the decision-making process about how we go forward from here and where we go next. Uh, those discussion sessions will begin the Sunday after Easter, the 27th, and they're going to continue through May. We've got uh, a good number of sessions planned. We also have a plan to offer child care during many of them, and you can take a look at those. Some of those, uh, the ones with child care are noted, and so that sign-up is on the right-hand side as you go out into the narthex. You'll see it there on the doors, uh, next to the doors on the right-hand side. So I hope that you will come out and join us for one of those conversations. Uh, finally, one note about the service today. So when we read the third scripture, okay, there are three scripture readings, and uh, when we get to the third one, so, uh, Matthew 27, note that it is, uh, has some room for some congregational participation, okay? So I hope that you'll be paying attention and that you'll respond appropriately. I think that you see right there. When you see that, when you see it look like that, that's when it's your turn, all right? <laughs> Kathleen? Good morning. Will you please stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship? <clears throat> Today we shout Hosanna with the crowds in Jerusalem. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We welcome Jesus with open arms. We sing his praises with palm branches in hand. But we know that there's more to this story. We know Will we follow to the garden, to the cross, to the tomb? We will follow because we know that his life and death are for our salvation. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I invite you now to join us in our opening hymn, number 280, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
pray with me? Lord Jesus, as we enter Holy Week, we turn our hearts once more to what happened in Jerusalem so long ago. Help us to hear the stories of your passion and your resurrection in a new way, so that the reality of your great love for us might transform us into new people. Amen. Please be seated. Peace of Christ be with you. And also Let's take a moment now and stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ. invite our children to come forward for our time together. children parading around with palm branches? Yeah? And did you see all these palms up here? We don't usually have these palms up here. Why do you think we're doing that? Why? Because it's Palm Sunday, right? And what happened on Palm Sunday, Lily? Do you know? Why? What happened? We put out a lot of the palms, but on the first Sunday with when there were palms, why do you think we did that? We go to other houses on Palm Sunday? Well, one of the things we, you can do that. That would be a great thing to do. One of the reasons we do that, have all these palms, is because when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, people were cutting palm branches and waving them, just like the children did this morning. And some of the people even put their coats down on the ground as a way of honoring Jesus. Do you think that that made Jesus happy? What do you think? Make Jesus happy? I think it probably made Jesus happy, very happy. And you know what else makes Jesus happy? When we do things for other people. And so one of the things I wanted to show you today is 
We have Easter baskets that some of you contributed to. Did anybody bring anything for Easter baskets into their Sunday school classes? Maybe you brought some money to buy things, or maybe you brought some of the books or some of the candy. And the teachers all assembled those baskets, and they're going to go to children who maybe don't have anybody else that will give them an Easter basket. Well, you'll have to wait till Easter. OK? And maybe you have any stress. And the other thing we did was we collected food for people that maybe didn't have enough food to eat. So that's another way we make Jesus happy when we do things for other people. So I was, um, the Sunday school children and their teachers collected enough for 69 Easter baskets. And I have no idea how many bags of food are out there because everybody in this congregation is so generous. There's, 25? oh, I bet there's like 125 or more. We'll have, we'll have to count them. Yeah, We'll have to count them before we load them up. And they're all going to Christian Caring Center, okay? But why don't we take a moment and we're going to say a prayer over these special gifts, okay? So let's pray together. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Who taught us to give to others. Who taught us to give to others. Thank you for the children and the adults. Thank you for the children and the adults. Who made these donations of food and Easter baskets. Who made these donations of food and Easter baskets. May the food nourish people who are hungry. May the food nourish people who are hungry. And may the Easter baskets make children happy. And help them to understand Christ's love. And help them to understand Christ's love. May your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit. Give those in need. Give those in need. Courage and strength to face life's challenges. Courage and strength to face life's challenges. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming up. Now, Children's Church is going to be downstairs in the Sunday school room. So if you're going to Children's Church, go downstairs, okay? Our first scripture reading is from uh, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, The whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Take a moment to pray together. God, we thank you for this day and for all that you've done for us. And we thank you for the scriptures that you've given us, for the story of this week, and for all that it means in our lives. And we pray that these words that we share today might be your words to your people. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I never really meant to get caught up in Jesus' parade. I was only going into Jerusalem to buy some olive oil. I was coming from Bethany, right outside the city, and I just kind of walked into it. I knew that Jesus had followers, but I never realized exactly how many followers he had. Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who lived in my town and who were friends of mine, they knew Jesus well. They'd been talking about him for a while, and I'd even seen him several times when he came by their home. I always said Jesus told good stories, but then again, my grandfather also tells good stories. That doesn't make him the Messiah either. To be honest, I was always kind of surprised just by how ordinary Jesus looked. Dirty clothes, no sandals, certainly didn't look like a king. In fact, I was surprised by exactly how much he looked just like one of us, just like any of us. So it was hard for me to buy into everything that people were saying about him, that he was a prophet, that he might even be the Messiah. But still something changed for me after Lazarus died or after that whole thing, whatever you want to call whatever happened with Lazarus. I stopped by the house to pay my respects to Mary and Martha. I know that he was dead. I wasn't around for what happened a few days later when Jesus came. All I know is when I saw Lazarus a few days later, it was like nothing had ever happened. I met him on the street and we said hello. And it was like nothing had ever happened. I've never believed in miracles. I always said I'd believe the Messiah had come when the Romans had gone. But this one was impossible to just brush aside, to ignore. I mean, it happened in my town. It happened to my friends. It happened among people I just can't write off. So I fell in with Jesus' crowd mainly because the road was narrow and I needed to get to Jerusalem. But, you know, at first I was just keeping my head down and kept walking. I didn't really want to be part of that crowd necessarily. But as I went, I listened to the people around me. I listened to the stories that they were telling about what Jesus had done for their friends, what Jesus had done in their towns. And they talked about healings. They talked about miracles. As we came down the Mount of Olives and rode up the other side of the Kidron Valley to the gate of the city, the crowds on either side of the road, they got much bigger. People were coming out from Jerusalem to welcome Jesus, and they took their cloaks off and they spread them in the road. Um, By the time our group passed by and people were trying to pick their cloaks back up, I'm sure I stepped on someone's fingers at some point. 
It was kind of hard not to. Some people were cutting palm branches and they were waving them, welcoming Jesus like he really was royalty. Now, never mind that royalty doesn't ever ride, to my knowledge, on the back of a donkey. The crowds kept shouting, Hosanna. I'd never seen anything like that before. It was like a prayer to Jesus, this whole crowd of people saying, Save us, Lord, save us. And I found myself getting caught up in it. I found that I really wanted to believe. And so I found myself praying. Now, I'm not particularly good at prayer. I haven't really had much practice. But that day, I started to pray. And I asked God for two things. First, I asked that Jesus might actually be who everybody was saying that he was. And second, I prayed for faith to believe. As we take some time now to pray, I invite you to just uh, spend a few moments here in silent prayer. And then we'll gather our thoughts and our hearts and our minds, lift up our joys and our concerns to the Lord. Let's pray together. God, we recognize as we gather here in this place, we recognize that there are so many good things about this time of year. We celebrate family and friends who come and visit and spend time with us. We celebrate just the joy of being in your house and hearing these stories, familiar stories, but stories just with so much meaning and so much power to shape our lives. And we thank you most especially for Jesus' story that we find ourselves in as we walk through this week with him. We look outside and we are just in awe of all that you're doing in your creation and the way that you bring this world back to life. We celebrate it and we give thanks to you for it, especially after a very, very long winter. As we gather here this morning, we're thinking about people who are close to us, people we're concerned about, people who have been uh, maybe on our hearts and on our minds for a long time. God, today uh, we bring them all before you and we offer them all to you, asking you to be at work for healing, for guidance, for protection, for safety. Whatever it is that we're praying for, we offer them to you. We lift up everybody on our prayer list, and we lift up ourselves this week. Sometimes we don't want to pray for ourselves. We forget to pray for ourselves. But we know that we need you just as much as anyone else. And so we ask that you be at work in us and through us. We also ask your prayers upon these that have been named this morning. So for Julia, she continues her recovery. We pray for Steve um, as he's lost his father. We pray for Carly as she gets ready for a tonsillectomy this week. We give you thanks for Sarah and Matt and for their uh, twin sons who were just born. 
I just pray your blessing upon them for health and uh, protection. God, we pray that you just uh, walk with that family in this time of great joy and uh, great celebration, and also I'm sure it's some, uh, some fear about what it means to take care of twins. We pray for Bud today as he undergoes uh, cancer surgery this week. We pray, too, for John, uh, who was admitted to the hospital, for Joyce, uh, who had a fall, and also for Angelina, a young girl who was taken to Children's Hospital this morning and who's in surgery right now. God, for all of these concerns and the many, many more that we have, we offer them to you. We pray for people and places we read about and heard about in the news this week, most especially for that uh, town near Pittsburgh and for the violence that happened there this week and for the families of young people in the high school and for the victims themselves. God, we don't understand these things, but we know that in the midst of these things that you are with us and we trust you in that. We don't understand much of what happens in our lives. But we know that you're in the middle of it. And we trust you with it. We pray all of these things in the name and for the sake of your son Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to continue worship this morning by offering God our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. If you're visiting with us today, we want to say again just how glad we are that you've uh, come to share an hour with us. You can leave your money in your pocket. We hope to see you again very soon. Let's continue our service of worship.
please join me in our prayer. Merciful God, once again we add our voices to the throngs who across the ages have shouted Hosanna at the coming of your son. Some meant it and followed. Some were simply there because it was something to see. Others would later add their voices to the ones that shouted, crucify him. May our songs, may our prayers, and may our gifts this morning reflect our deepest desire to be more than spectators. May we truly be followers of your Son, our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Our second scripture reading comes from the second chapter of Philippians, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, and so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. seated. Our third reading is from the 27th chapter of Matthew, verses 15 through 23. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, 
for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders pers persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? And all of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You have to be careful who you start a fight with. That's what I would have told Jesus if he had asked me. Every day he went to the temple and every day the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, they listened intently to what he had to say. And every day he found a way to stick his finger in their eyes. He pushed and he pushed and he pushed some more. I actually heard it was one of Jesus' own disciples who gave him up. The high priest's guard went and arrested him at night because they didn't want a riot. Now, there was a trial, of course, but they already knew what they were going to do. They planned to hand him over to Pilate. Pilate had no difficulty whatsoever shedding Jewish blood. The whole business was shameful. The only thing that Jesus was guilty of was making them look bad. The thing was, the people could have stopped it. Pilate makes this show every year of releasing a prisoner at Passover. It's ridiculous, really. I mean, what's one among the hundreds that he slaughters? But still, the crowd could have asked for his release. No one did. I wasn't there. I was honestly afraid of what was going to happen next. When I heard Jesus was arrested, I stayed out of the city. I have a wife. I have kids. I thought for sure the place was going to explode. I thought that the Romans would come down hard in retaliation. But it didn't. Because nobody fought for him at all. From what I heard, Jesus didn't even fight for himself. No rousing speeches. No condemnation of the Romans or their occupation. Just silence. The only thing that I can think is that if he knew he was going to die anyway, maybe he thought, well, what's the point in taking a bunch of people with me? I'm disappointed in us. I don't understand how it is or who we are when we can embrace someone as savior one minute and turn around and throw him to the Romans the next. And not just let him be crucified, but to plot for it, to hand him over, and then to shout for him to be executed. I wonder sometimes, is it Rome who's destroying us? Or are we destroying ourselves? The thing is, I prayed for Jesus to be the one. For the first time, I really prayed. And I felt hope. I felt like it mattered. I felt like God was listening. I say that God answered my prayer about 50%. I wanted so much for it to be him. But how can the Messiah end up on a cross? It doesn't make any sense. It's almost as though God answered the wrong half of my prayer. I'd rather that the Messiah had come and I never knew a thing about it than expecting him to be and then finding out that he was not. I guess that's why faith is so hard. Because just when you think you've understood what it is that God is doing, suddenly you find out, that you've misunderstood it completely. That you've gotten it all wrong.
you walk through this week with Jesus, think about how everybody got it wrong. Those who believed in him got it wrong because on Friday, they didn't believe that Jesus would be alive come Sunday morning. Those who didn't believe just missed everything that happened. God surprises us. And when we think we've understood is the moment when God steps in and says, no, you don't. Go forth with a new understanding. Be led by the Holy Spirit, walking with Jesus as you go out into the world in his name.